Hi, this is John. Kits can be great. They give you ideas, they give you parts, and they give you details like decals. However, sometimes you want to build a model that there is no kit for, or maybe you want to use up some of the parts in your box from previous projects. This video goes into some basics about how to make your own parts and get into scratch building of model rockets. The first thing, of course, is to figure out what rocket to build. I like models of missiles and sounding rockets, so that's usually where I go for inspiration. The standard Aero B is a great rocket, and there's no current kit of it available. So the first thing to do is find drawings and dimensions. You can generally Google and find most of that information. Of course, if you have a copy of Rockets of the World, that's the Bible for scale modelers. So figure out what part of the rocket you want to model, get dimensions, and mark out the overall sizes of the various sections, at least with rough dimension. Then the thing to do is figure out what size to model it at. I've put together this handy page to help you figure it out. Enter the major diameter and the other dimensions of the prototype that you've determined. And then pick a body tube size to model. Here I'm starting with a BT50, which gives about a 7% scale, and we can also see the dimensions the model will be. And we will also experiment with a BT55. Everything just gets larger. I decided to stick with a BT50, which results in a rocket of an overall length of about 16 inches, which is a nice size to work with. And then reality sets in, and we have to figure out what components we actually have available. In this case, the largest Ogive nose cone I had for a BT-50 was only four and a half inches long. Ideally, the nose would have been five and three quarter inches long, but we'll just lengthen the body tube to compensate. Okay, so now we know how long we want our main body tube to be. We just have to cut a piece of BT-50 tubing that long. So here I'm marking at ten and an eighth inches for the main airframe. To get a clean cut, there are three key things. We need a sharp knife, we need to go slowly, and we need to have a guide. I have these Estes tube cutting guides from long ago, but there are many similar things, including ones you could 3D print yourself. These guides actually do a couple things. One is they fit tightly around the tube so they won't slide up and down. Two is they fit tightly around the circumference of the tube so it won't have any tendency to dent when you're cutting. And three, they provide a nice flat surface against which to run the blade. Number one rule for hobby knives, if you can't remember the last time you changed the blade, or you know you cut something hard, change the blade before cutting anything delicate. Then score, progressively cutting deeper, around the tube running the blade against the side of your guide. Don't try to cut through all at once. Cut through in many passes. You'll get a much cleaner cut. And here's the fresh cut. If you've used a sharp knife and gone carefully, you should have no dents or tears. Now we can remove the guide and clean up the ends of the tubes if they're a little fuzzy. You can use 400 or finer sandpaper to smooth the ends and make sure there are no fuzzies on the outside. This is mostly cosmetic, but it doesn't hurt to be perfect. Because of the bow tail, I wanted to elongate the motor mount tube a little bit, half inch or so. So I cut the motor mount tube out of a fresh piece of BT-20 tubing. Basically just the same thing all over again, like we did with the BT-50 tubing. And then the little slot for the motor hook, once again using as a reference a standard Estes motor mount tube, 
I actually did this about an eighth inch forward so the engine sticks out a little less than normal, but that's personal preference. As always, go slow and soft, don't crush the tube, cut through in many passes. And then this goes together like a standard Estes motor mount. We have the motor hook, the sleeve that holds the motor hook in place, the aft centering ring that's slotted to fit around the motor hook, and the forward centering ring. Whoops, doesn't quite fit. It looks like the Estes BT20 body tube is a tiny bit thicker than the motor mount tube, so we'll peel one layer of paper out of the inside of the centering ring to accommodate that. Next major thing is to cut out the fins. Here I'm using 3 32 inch balsa sheet. Note the grain orientation. The easiest way to do this is to cut through a paper template. So first we make a plan of the shape of the fins and then we duplicate it for each fin, keeping careful track of the leading edge. We want the grain of the balsa lined up with the leading edge of the fin. This makes sure the fin is as strong as possible and doesn't snap off parallel to the body tube. So I lined up all three leading edges and I'll take advantage of one of the existing edges of the balsa sheet to line them up with and save myself some cuts. Then we're going to use an old model airplane trick of pinning the template and the balsa down to the cutting mat so things don't move around while we're trying to cut them out. And then we cut out each fin. Again, going slowly and carefully with multiple passes and you'll get a nice clean edge. And the last cut, again always trying to be careful on the first as well as the last cut. And now we're done. We can take out the pins and our pieces will be cut out just as though they were die cut for us from a kit manufacturer. If you didn't quite cut through it one part, just go ahead and put it down and finish cutting. Usually at most one more pass will be all that is necessary. Any slight irregularities can be cleaned up with 400 grit sandpaper. Here I'm stacking up the three fins, taking particular care to align the root edges.
and that's all there is to that. A common feature of rockets are bow tails or transitions between body tube sizes. The traditional way to do this was to make a paper cone and then saturate it with CA to make it hard. Apogee has a very nice article on how to do this in their Peak of Flight newsletter, issue 136. You can also find calculators for this by googling model rocket paper transition. These days I think it's easier to 3D print small parts like this, which is what I did here. So there we have it. All the pieces ready to go as though we have body kit. Nose cone, it's just standard Estes nose cone. Body tube, VT50 body tube that we cut nicely. Motor mount tube, basically the standard Estes design, just lengthened slightly. Fins, cut in the old fashioned way from balsa. And this is the only semi exotic part a 3D printed bow tail, but there are other techniques. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some ideas for your own scratch building project.